So here we are again and in my endless pursuit of trying to teach you to draw things that you would never think of drawing this week we're doing potato peelers uh, and we have two in the house like this is usually my favorite and my girlfriend prefers this different ways of using it like here you hold it against your finger and pull meanwhile here you have two hands you hold a potato here and you pull it like this so I am going to concentrate on this one because I'm selfish and I'm drawing the one that I like. Uh, this has another cool thing, well this one technically has it too. This is the, the tip of it and here we have this little thing, which many people don't know, but this is to take the black dots out of the potato skin. So aside from that, if we analyze it a little bit more, it has these two grooves here which gives you a really nice grip so you can, you can pull nicely and of course these uh, blades always spin in a way so they take off the most of the potato. So let's get started with the drawing. So first I want to see what will be the nicest angle that has the most information. And I think something like this, even though the blade is pointing the other way around. So technically it should be something like this. As per usual, I am going to start by drawing a box and then we're going to place our little potato peeler into that box. And I already started off by making a mistake. Also noticing this is much longer, so you can see it right here. This distance sort of fits in one and a half times maybe here. Meanwhile here, if we take this distance, it fits in almost twice, which means that I will need to prolong this shape by at least the off, which would be somewhere here. Now I am going to try to not copy this, like just take the design elements that I like within it and then adjust it to my own liking. Uh, slight note, uh, the, our balcony doors, windows are open because it's nice and warm. It's a uh, hot, warm springtime. So you can hear a bunch of birds and maybe cars and other stuff whizzing by. My excuses for that. My apologies for that. Your excuses are uh, Dutch. Oh, Jesus, I'm Dutchifying myself. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's decide. This area seems like a good place to put the thumb and the, the finger groove, which is this. And we go there. Uh, they left this open because it's much less material. So it is cheaper to construct like that. But since our is, or our, this, this design does not need to be manufactured or it doesn't need to be super profitable, at least in my opinion. I'm going to see what's possible to do. Maybe we can do a nice wooden uh, handhold there. I don't know if it's nice to have it super heavy, but uh, we shall see. Uh, what I know is here we will have, well, it actually coincides nicely, the axis for uh, this little cutter. Let me take a look at it. Yeah, so the blade is something like this and it has sort of a stopper here so it can't uh, rotate all the way around. Here, if we want to round this, I would say we will do the, the trick of just adding an ellipse here. I'm going to put this the center for our ellipse, one here, and then I'm going to project it down by this distance. So I take distance, distance, move it onto this ellipse. I think it should be something like that. Not ellipse, but this. I meant this axis. Uh, and if I look at my ellipse, this seems to be there longer is their major axis and this the, so my bottom ellipse looks much better than my top so i'm gonna try and adjust my top ellipse so it works with my bottom ellipse so now we have these two points so i have this running until there then i have my ellipse and i have this running to there Okay, uh, as you can see here, of course, this would be very bad if this would be sharp. So I am going to just 
here I'm not gonna do the whole ellipse thing I'm just gonna cut into the material a little bit here and there and just round it off like that same here nice roundings like that uh, and with that I would say we cut a part out here and the rest this could be like some interesting metal material and the rest would be wood like a wood inlay just to make it a little bit classy looking uh, and this I will not I will round a little bit there and there just so we have nice ending and now let's see the patients coming in with the fine liners so I'm gonna put down dots just to make my life a little bit easier and then here we have these nice roundings and then here we have this half circle and then another rounding another rounding below I'm gonna connect these just so I have a bit more control and then this should come in somewhere there just looking at that I'm gonna pre-draw it a couple of times in the air it's not perfect but it's close enough I would say uh, let's finish up this side I can round there and round there so one two three as a, so I, I talked about this in previous videos but just as a quick reminder if we draw an ellipse that is on this side our ellipse would fit here which means this part of the ellipse is gonna come here and this part of the ellipse is gonna come here so this is always smaller than that it's a, it's a nice little rule of thumb you, it, it, it's gonna become natural at some point but you will have to exercise it for a while and keep it in mind in the beginning. Okay, my fine liner died there, so we have a new fine liner now, which seems to be working. Uh, so something that I want to showcase here, uh, I forgot to show it here, and I was also designing it a little bit afterwards. I want a center line for this wooden inlay, and then we can show that this um, is a rounded area by just rounding that center line a little bit. So aside from helping us, in construction, center lines can be very useful in communicating as well. Okay, so the one thing that we need now is the blade. Now we can go over our lines, strengthen them a little bit. Uh, my only problem is that I have somewhat of a shaky hand. So I can't be doing it too slowly. And if you do it too fast, it can happen that you miss the line that you want to strengthen. So it comes with a little bit of compromise, but that's, uh, that looks pretty nice. So now we can shade a little bit. take out my lightest marker again and just draw in 
some wood grain here, some patterns that we would have in uh, something that's wooden there. Uh, let me take some brownie woody thing. <laughs> As you can see, because I did it with a light marker, these things are not really visible now. So I'm going to wait for this to dry a little bit, come back with this brown and then also with a darker brown just to make the grain a bit more understandable. So I used two, one and two here. So I'm going to switch to a three, which might be a little bit strong because it's a different marker. So let me try the two of this. If that works better. I just want to emphasize the curvature here, which we can do a bit here as well. Okay, so actually the two blends nicely together with our previous two. So I think this should work just about nicely. And because there, here we have a curvature, there's a little bit of color, the uh, color or lightness that is coming through there. Okay, now our brown dried hopefully enough. What we can do is draw in some of these grains that we did before. And it's not going to be super visible with this line, but it is a good start. And then we just switch to our darker brown. And then we can draw a couple of these lines here as well. Uh, something that we can do for ambient occlusion is where it's closer to the edge. We can bring in a little bit of that brown as well. Something like that. That should make it slightly nicer. I feel like I could add a bit more gray there. So I'm just gonna lift it up like that give it a bit more of that flow. Uh, now I come can come back again with that three neutral gray. Strengthen it a bit, add some there as well. And it should give a nicer, maybe just one more line. I could have waited here a little bit, it was still a bit wet. So yeah, watch out for stuff like that. Our blade, can have a bit of this darkness as well. And the light is sort of coming from here, so this blade could have a bit of a shadow. Uh, I've been thinking that because I want this to be more metallic, I could make it a little bit bluer. So I had these, I don't know why I didn't start with my blue gray since I, I had them here. For something that's called blue gray or, or cold gray, this is more blue than cold or gray. It's like fully blue. But at least in this case, when I, I want to render metals, it should work relatively well. One more thing that I would definitely do with something like this is just uh, draw it from maybe a different angle or maybe a top view. So a top view would be something like this. Trying to keep the proportions somewhat in mind. We had our thumb and finger groove here. We had an ellipse there that connected there. And there, nicely, a little bit of a rotation. And then just to go along with the theme, I'm gonna add 
a little bit of wood texture there. And what we can do is I am going to take one of my blacks, in case this one, because I know this is relatively thin, and I'm just going to draw it an outline. So it uh, pops off the page a little bit. And then as a final to the drawings, what you can do is I always like giving some Im Im information. So this could be finger, grooves. This could be rounded. Sometimes, sometimes information like this is also not the most like informative because you kind of see what's going on there. So we see that this is a blade and we see that that's rounded, but something like this gives just extra things to look at when you look at a page like this. Uh, yeah, and with that, we learned how to draw a uh, potato peeler. One thing that I will add before we finish is I want to sort of hold this in here. So what I'm going to do is here and here, I'm going to add screws. So here we would have a little inlay and we would have this typical star formation of a screw. And then to emphasize that, I would take a darker, like we had the CG3 that I have somewhere here, exactly. And like this is a darker screw. And to emphasize it a bit more, I'll take my white gempel and I know that light is coming from somewhere there, and even though it's not the most correct, I'm gonna add just a bit of light around here, so it's sort of understandable. It's not the nicest solution, but I just wanted a quick solution to keep that in there. And that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I still hope that uh, you learned something from this uh, object that, will, that you will probably never use in your life. I mean, the object you will use, but you will never want to draw a potato peeler. But I also am going on vacation, so there's going to be some shorter videos, just some uh, how to draw videos, probably just with uh, music, not too much commentary. So I hope you will enjoy those as well. As always, uh, you can like the video, always comment. I Even on vacation, I will definitely read the comments and reply to them. And you can also subscribe if you want to see more content like this. But as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and uh, see you probably in a bit. Bye-bye. <laughs>